everyone. Today I'm painting a portrait of Jimi Hendrix and my reference photo comes from Jim Marshall's Rolling Stone cover from 1970. I'm going to be using some deeper colors so the drawing here is relatively dark and my next job is to apply masking fluid to the lightest parts of the face, hair, and coat. I'm using an old brush for this. Masking fluid will ruin a brush so if you use it make sure you've got an old brush you don't care about. I think the biggest challenge here will be his hair, which has a texture I'll try to mimic by brushing the masking fluid lightly over the paper where I see highlights. The tooth of the paper will create an irregular grainy texture. The highlights are around the outside edges of his hair, especially on the top. I'm trying out a couple of new colors from Old Holland here, cyan and blue deep, and I'll be using turquoise and cobalt blue as well, along with some yellow green. And as you can see, I'm slopping these colors over the entire surface of my paper with big brushes and letting them flow together. I'm dropping more concentrated paint on the places where he's darkest, but I'm not being uptight about it. The masking fluid pops out as white here. What I'm painting will become a sort of medium value, and later I'll paint the darks. I absolutely love working like this. You'll see me absorb some of the paint with a scrap of paper towel. Then I'll let it dry completely. This ended up taking about two hours. Enough time to have lunch, get some groceries, watch a little TV with Jeff. And once the surface had calmed down and my paper was flat again, I moved on to the darks. Okay, preliminaries are over. Let's paint him. I'm using a number one small round brush and a mixture of my two blues. And I'm defining his eyes first. I've sped up the video 15 times here. Not including the drying time, the painting took me about 90 minutes from start to finish. The darks only took me an hour, which is very fast for me, although his coat and his hair will be very loose. But this technique of isolating the highlights and painting all the mid-tones in a wash and then doing the darks is like magic. He already looks like Jimmy to me. To give his hair even more texture, I'm using a messed up number six round brush to sort of dot his hair on. The bristles are separated and this creates a sort of random mix of dots and marks. I use this brush all the time in my paintings and would not want to paint without it. Save your messed up brushes. Now those highlights are pretty harsh so I'm softening their edges by gently rubbing a damp paper towel scrap over them instant soft skin. Now I'll do another pass with the dark blues and really try to nail down those shadows around his eyes. In case you don't know about Jimi Hendrix, he was an absolute guitar genius and it's as if you can see that genius in his eyes. When I was a teacher, I felt like I could recognize students who had that special sort of spark, and without exception, those rare genius students were just golden. What a great face in general, right? I'm going over parts of his mouth that are the darkest, the tips of his front teeth are peeking out just a bit, and I'll paint them light blue soon. Next I'll lay in some larger shadows. I still can't quite believe how quickly this painting came together for me. Sometimes it's a struggle, but other times it's not. And obviously a painting is easier and quicker when you're only using a handful of colors. If you're a beginner, I recommend starting out with a limited palette like this. It'll show you how your paint behaves and you'll learn how to control your brush. And now I'm ready to remove the masking fluid around his hair. Make sure everything surrounding the masking fluid is completely dry before you take it off. Then using that messed up brush in that deep blue, I'm dotting texture over his hair again. I'm trying to integrate the white parts with the darker blues and greens. Where the white shapes seem too big, I'm dotting over parts of them to make them seem smaller. And I'm spending the most time where his hair is the darkest, which is generally around his face. So much fun. I love painting afros. Next I'll do some extra dark details on various parts of his face and I'll finish the details on his coat in a fast and loose way. 
This is one of my favorite ways to deal with a black and white reference photo. It sort of gives me permission to have fun with color. I could just as easily have painted this with warm colors or even a mix of warm and cool. As long as you're consistent with your values, making dark things dark and light things light, you're good to go. Okay, this coat. It's cool and artistic, and it's got a sort of old-timey military or marching band vibe to it. I like how the collar frames his face. The original Rolling Stone cover cropped his left shoulder to fit their vertical format, but I was able to find the horizontal version of this photo, and I love the composition it creates. His eyes are in that magic spot that's a third of the way over from the left and a third of the way down from the top. Finally, here are a few finishing touches. I hope you like the finished product, and any beginners out there should definitely try painting like this. It's the way I learned how to do what I do. Thanks a lot for watching, and please subscribe.